I prefer Veronica. To, to, so Veronica may win a little more. We get more. the truth now. Dan Parent <laughs> prefers Veronica. It's a really interesting time to be an Archie fan because I don't think the brand has ever been as high profile as it is now. Partly because of a show that is so different from the comics that it's based on, Riverdale. Right. Um, as somebody who's been with the company for over 30 years, um, you live and breathe Archie, Archie comics. Is it strange to see uh, the characters taking on this new life and existence in this really wild show? Um, yeah, it is. It's, it's pretty exciting because over the years, they've tried many times to get a, an Archie TV show going or a movie, and there's been specials and sure. TV movies, things like that. But this is the first time we've actually had like a real primetime show that's really clicked, that's really taken off. It's become a really big hit, and it is interesting to see, um, even though it's sort of a different setting, like Riverdale's a little dark and a little moody. The, the characters are that is quite the understatement, Dan. <laughs> a little dark, a little moody. A little bit. <laughs> Uh, but the characters are still pretty much the same. I mean, Archie's still Archie, and Ver the, you know Betty, Veronica, Jughead. They're all they all are you know similar. Let's stop. The, okay. Archie is not really like he's in the comics. He is ripped. He's just well. That is well. It, first of all, it's on the CW. So everybody's hot on that network anyway. There's no ugly people on the CW. So yes, everybody is a hotter version of themselves. Um, yeah, Archie's you know in the comic book he's a little more goofy. Uh, yeah. Uh, he's not quite the you know the the um, Adonis he is on the show, but. Um, but he's still got that the boy next door appeal, mm -hmm. and Betty and Veronica too. They're a little more sophisticated on the show, but they're still. I think they're the stars of the show too. I, absolutely, I right? think. I, I think um, they, they nailed it with the casting of Betty and Veronica. I really do, and Cheryl Blossom too. I think she she uh, is fantastic. How was it being there since we were there? You know, going back three decades, and all of a sudden, you know, Archie starts taking all these chances and all these risks as a company, and watching them pay off. Because I'm sure at the beginning you must have been a little nervous, like, is this going to work? Back in the 50s and 60s, there was lots of slapstick and a lot of, a lot of crazy stories they would do. And then I think things got a little watered down because the formula was working. And then uh, the management at the time wasn't really into taking a lot of chances. Things were just working. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. But there were stories we wanted to do that they were just like, ah, that's, you know, just is a stick to the normal formula. Mm -hmm. um, then um, when John Goldwater came on board in uh, 2009, I believe it was, we had our, the two previous owners passed away within a year of each other. So the company was under new management ownership. Uh, and then John came on board and it was like, we're kind of, he, he had this, he didn't feel like we were really in the 21st century. We were sort of, we looked like we were still back in time. So he's like, where is all like the color, the characters of color? Like, where, where's the diversity? And we're like, yeah, we, it's, it's a problem here. So we started bringing a lot of new characters, uh, just different ethnicities, different backgrounds. And then with Kevin, we were like, you know, can we have a gay character in the Archie group? And we were like, we couldn't think of a reason not to. Walk me through that process of, of introducing Kevin mm -hmm. and how that came about. Was it was were you guys just spitballing ideas and it came up? How, how did that how did that come about? Yeah, we were just, you know, was we had been adding characters and we were like, let's add a gay character. And the Archie fans embraced Kevin. I mean, they liked the character. And, and we introduced the character as, you know, we had to be very careful about it because we didn't want to do it as a very special, like after school special episode of Archie. You know, we wanted to just bring Kevin in. He's open about being gay. People will like the kid. You know, the the, the basic the first storyline was he comes to town. Veronica has the hots for him, and everyone else has figured out he's gay, but except for Veronica, because right. she's you know when she wants something, she doesn't really think about it. She just wants what she wants, and so it was sort of like a just like a very kind of like a typical Archie story, with the with the misunderstandings sure, sure. and stuff. And um, but we were like we want to bring him in, Kevin in and. Um, we want this to be a character who's going to stick around. We don't want to just make him like a one-off character. But that's really up to the readers to decide. The readers will decide if they like Kevin. Uh, of course, the issue sold really well, which is always a good thing. Um, the Archie fans liked Kevin. As somebody, you know, you're, you're a fan. You're not just somebody who works in the comics mm -hmm. uh, field. You're a fan. You, you, you collect comic art mm -hmm. and whatnot. Um, what's the feeling like to know that you created a, a, a character who's become a permanent part of the Archie canon? It's great. 
I mean, it's, it feels great to watch Riverdale and see, you know, your character you've created on a TV show. He gets all the best zingers. Yeah, he does. He does. He has some good lines. Um, and it's great, too. I've, I've also created characters, of course, that aren't, you know, as big as Kevin, you know, through the years. Um, that, that sure, are, but, there, but it's so hard to create a character that becomes part of the foundation of, of right, you know, a, right. a comic book, you know, group, right? Right, right. No, it's, and it's, you did that. Yeah, and it's, it's you know, it's, it's great. It's great. I, you know, I was a big Archie fan before I started there, so, you know, I'm going in as a fan, too. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's um, really wonderful. What's the biggest thing that people misunderstand about Betty and Veronica? I think people just think, you know, that Betty is just totally sweet and, and Veronica is a total bitch. Um, Veronica's pretty complicated, as, as they've gotten really well on the TV show. You know, you know, Veronica could be, she may act a little bitchy, but she's really not a bitch, she's complicated. Um, Betty also, too, comes off as a sweet girl, which she is, but she's got some issues. Especially in the older Archie stories, if you go back into Betty back in the 50s and 60s, she had some like really almost like stalkerish qualities. <laughs> but they sort of, through the years, they people love Betty so much, they in sort a, of... In a really cute 50s and 60s type of way, yeah. Right, she's, you're right, she's that. running around like a cute little stalker. <laughs> um, and, and Veronica was always the one that won Archie's heart back in the old stories. But they've really kind of evened it out where you know, it goes back and forth between, between the two girls. Um, Do you guys keep track of that? Okay, so Veronica won this round. Betty's gonna win the next. You guys keep track of that in the office? Um, no, I think it depends on the, like the writer. Um, because I prefer Veronica, to, to, so Veronica may win a little. We get more. the truth now. Dan Parent <laughs> prefers Veronica. It's true. I mean, I love Betty. I love her. I love them the, together. I think they're. I mean, I think the thing that makes Betty and Veronica work too is the friendship. That's a huge angle. Um, as different as they are, as competitive as they are, they will always. Um, their friendship will always win in the end. Now, they'll treat each other like garbage sometimes, but if someone else comes in and treats the other one bad, they will defend them. Um, so there's, the element of friendship is what works with, with Betty and Veronica. Well, the music, the, the music crossovers are, are fantastic. Is there, is there a music, uh, musical act that you'd love to see uh, the Archies uh, meet so you can do the cover for? I like like Weezer and, and like I mean I guess they're not new alternative anymore now <laughs> they're like classic alternative but you know more classic al alternative some alternative bands like that I like you know Green Day would be cool things like that Green Day would be a good one yeah yeah somehow in between doing all this Archie stuff you f you, you find time for your own creator owned work mm -hmm. uh, tell us about Die Kitty Die yes uh, well what we did was um, Fernando and I Fernando Ruiz and I created Fernando Ruiz is another longtime Archie artist and we just um, had an idea. Um, to do something just that we wanted to just do on our own that we liked, and it's sort of like if you if you read the book, you'll see that there's a lot of inspiration in it from superhero stuff that we like, um, a lot of Harvey Comics influences. I grew up on Harvey Comics, and they're really not doing much anymore. So right. I put in my we've got little little characters and nods to these things. But the premise of the book is basically uh, Kitty is a um, a witch, and her sales are terrible. They don't know what to do with her, so they decide to kill her off to, to boost her sales. Mm. But in our world, the characters are also involved. They're like real-life characters, too. Think like Who Framed Roger Rabbit sort of a scenario. Right. So they want to kill Kitty off, and they don't know how to do it. So they, the publisher, the corrupt publisher, decides to round up the other failed characters in the comic book group that have not been around for a while. And whoever can kill off Kitty will get their own series again. So you've got all these sort of has been comic characters trying to off Kitty, um, and you really don't know who's really on her side and who is really trying to do her in. Um, so, you know, it's maybe also similar to like a Roadrunner, <laughs> a fancy Roadrunner cartoon, where, but they're all trying to kill her off. And um, so we, we, we did that series. Um, we've done two series, um, uh, and we're working on the third series now. Is this something you see doing, uh, you know, as an ongoing thing, you know, whenever you guys find the, the time, I guess? Yeah, yeah, I mean, we do, we only do um, four issues a year, and then we do like a, like a comp, like a trade of that four issues. So we'll, 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 we'll do that, and um, we usually kickstart it, because if we kickstart it, we can control it and do whatever we want. Right. And then we bring it to our publisher, Chapter House in Canada, they publish it. And um, so it seems like it's a good model. We have got an, a fan base that's, that's following it, mm -hmm. um, and it's you know the, the sales have been pretty steady. So it's just fun because we can let loose and do anything 
we want. Art influences. Who are some of the artists when you were starting out that caught your attention, that made you look to the front page and say, wait, who drew this? I like this guy's art. Well, Dan DiCarlo, of course. Um, but back then, I didn't know him by name because they didn't put credits on the books. So you would just kind of... Right. They, when did they start putting credits on them? In the early 80s. Early 80s. Early 80s. That long. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you'd look at a book and you'd be like, this is, this is really, really good art. And I recognized his artist, but I didn't know him by name. So he just became like the really good Archie artist, you know. Did any, did the superhero artists, the guys like Neil Adams and, and Jim Apar, do you see any of their influence on your, on your work now? Did they, did they help shape how you, how you do your work now? Well, I mean, I appreciated their art a lot. I don't know if I, I don't mean, I don't think there's, you, you would see any like Neil Adams influence in my work. Just the fact that I like his art a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I always liked Joe Staten a lot too because he was a superhero artist who drew cartoony. So I always have been drawn to that sort of cross style. Last thing, tell me uh, the one, do you have a, is there one Dan Parent issue that, you know, someone who's never read your work should pick up? I sort of go back to my first comic that I did with the cover for In Interiors. It was Veronica, number one because she'd never had her own series before, and I started that. So I would say it's gonna be Veronica number one, which is from 1989, or it's gonna be um, Veronica 208, which is the first Kevin Keller. I'd say it's between those two. And those are probably the ones, two of the issues that people bring up to me the most at, at conventions. Yeah, those are the ones you sign the most? Pretty much, pretty much. Well, Kev, lately, Kevin, of course, but I still, you know, if you go long run, <laughs> probably Veronica number one.